Let's quickly review what we covered yesterday, last time. And um, I'm just going to show you a slightly new result. Has anyone finished one, sorry, one, 14A? Anyone finished 14A? Okay, good. We'll be able to move into 14B, which is about graphing. But I do want to show you something quickly, which um, those of you who finished will have encountered already, but it's, it's a result worth knowing. Okay. So firstly, let's just think about conversion, right? These new units, okay, what was the one equation which I said was probably the key to doing all of your conversions? Yes? Okay, so you're thinking about, I actually meant between radians and degrees. Uh, I'll get to my L and R ratio in a minute. If I'm thinking about radians and degrees and how they fit together, I'm going to go with pi radians, which is equal to 180 degrees. If you start from there, you'll very, very quickly be able to convert back and forth, and you won't, con you won't confuse which way is which. Okay? So I always write that one down, and I don't bother with any of the other ones. I don't bother with pi on 180 or 180 on pi, because I always confuse them with each other. But people never confuse that one, so that's the one they okay? Now, geometrically speaking, we've already determined that if I have, say, something like... An arc over here, okay, I'll call this um, this particular angle, here, and I've got a radius in my circle, right? The very first place that we started in terms of formulas was arc length, right? And arc length comes right out of the very definition of what radians are. It's the ratio between arc length and radius, right? So we said that L was equal to, do you remember? Just r theta. Like the maths of it could not get any more simple, okay? After arc length, we looked at, in comparison, we looked at an area, right? So for example, if I have another thing over here, now I'm going to be a bit naughty and call this theta as well. That's a bit terrible, but you get the idea. Okay. If I have an area, I'm just going to indicate it with a different color. We call this shape a sector. The sector area is A equals, good morning. Now obviously we have to have an R squared in there because that's where the, um, we're based on pi R squared, but if I want some proportion of it, then does anyone remember what my formula is going to be? Starts with a fraction. R Half R squared. R squared theta. Fantastic. So these are kind of your like bread and butter results. There's one result that comes out of that, which is not as common, but it's very, very elegant and simple, and it's beautiful to see, which is why I'm going to show you right now. My third and last color. If I draw one more sector over here, right? So if I draw a sector over here, under and bottom, you can see it not only subtends these two intervals, not only subtend a sector, they also subtend this shape over here, right? And this is like if I took the circle and I sliced an edge off it. Does anyone remember what it's called? Also starts with S. It's a segment. Okay, it's a segment. Now, correct. Now, just like with um, sectors and that kind of thing, you have, in fact, this this interval that I've drawn, this chord, has actually cut off not just one segment, but two. Like this is the obvious one. It's smaller than the other one, so we call this one the minus segment. Where's the other segment? The rest of it. Yeah, it's it's the other part of the circle, right? It's like that joke when you walk up to a cake and you cut off a little slice and then you leave a little slice there and take the rest of it, okay? So here, I've got a minor segment down here and a major segment, okay? Now, here's the beautiful thing about this. If I call this a, a third theta, I'm calling it red theta, okay? <laughs> I've got the radii there. If I want to know what the area of this segment is, all I need to do is do it by subtraction. Do you see that it's the subtraction that's a difference between two areas? If you start with this sector, and I know what the area of the sector is, and you take away this triangle which is dotted, then you'll be left with the segment. Do you agree with that? Okay. So I'm going to call this segment area. Like we just said, you start with the sector, which we've just said is half R squared theta. But then what you want to do is take away that triangle. Now, we know a few different ways to work out the area of a triangle. The best way depends kind of on what information that you have. Um, what's the normal, what's the first formula for the area of a triangle that you learn? Oh, Half base times height, right? Now this is great in cases where you have a base and a perpendicular height. I don't have height. Well, I mean, I, I suppose I could make this 
the base, but you know, it doesn't matter which one's which. I don't have a perpendicular height, certainly, um, unless I've got some 90 degree angles in there which are sort of random. So what's our other way of working out the area of a triangle? Half A, B, C. Half, I'll write that here. Half A, B, sine C, right? And that C there indicates it's the included angle, yes? It's the one between A and B, okay? And you have a look at this. I have exactly all those pieces of information. I have two sides, there are my A and B. They happen to be the same length because of the circle. And the included angle is theta. That's it, right? So when I'm working out that area for this circle, <coughs> it's a half. AB is R times R. So it's R squared. And then I go sine of the included angle, which is just sine of theta, right? That's really nice, because look at this. I just take out my common factor. And look at the simplicity and elegance of that little formula. It's really nice and very sort of condensed. Okay? Now, keep in mind, right? This is a perfect example. I mean, all of these are, right? But this is a perfect example of why these, these formulas, they, they come right out of what radians are. They don't work in degrees. You can't possibly do this in degrees, right? If this angle was like, you know, 70 degrees or something like that. This thing over here is always going to be less than 1. These things are not going to really compare to each other. So students will frequently um, evaluate this formula on their calculators, will not remember to change the, um, the mode that they're in. So they'll pop in the wrong units. And when they put in, oh yeah, it's like it's 75 or whatever it is, um, their area ends up being astronomically larger than the entire circle itself, which clearly doesn't make sense. So this segment area uh, will also come up really quickly, uh, commonly, and, and this is a nice result to use. Okay. Now, what we're then going to move on to in 14b is we're going to move away from circles, okay? Because do you remember I said um, radian measure radians as a unit or non-unit? We introduced it for two reasons. Do you remember what the two reasons are? Circles, circles, and then calculus. Now I said circles was the accessible part, and it is how we define it. So that's where we begin but we very quickly go away from it. So that's why the next exercise is about graphing. It just begins with all your regular things, all your regular graphs, I'll do one over here, and says, look, you know how to graph these in degrees. Can you get your head into the space of graphing them in gradients? Okay, so for those of you who are up to 14b, and I'll write up the question for a second, let's just quickly get this in our head. If I say, okay, here's the side curve, right? I'm thinking in radians now. This is what's true. Not 180 degrees, I don't worry about that. I'm thinking about pi radians, two pi radians, all that kind of thing. What's the period of the sine curve? From naught to two pi, right? So that's why I've got an intercept at pi. Where are the stationary points? Where does it turn around? Okay, I'm used to say at nine degrees, but that's pi on two and three pi on two. Can I just make a note, by the way? One of the great things about this is that when you look at all of this in terms of like the proportions, it makes it really easy to see how far along you are. Like, oh look, this is three quarters along, right? That's how far I have to go. What's well, three quarters of two, which is three or two. Uh, when you do the, su the cos curve, so, we're getting exactly the same kinds of numbers, but the features are at different spots, right? So for example, there are three stationary points that I've drawn here for the cos curve, right? Where are they? They're at 2 pi and, and 0 there and pi. Right? That corresponds to the fact that my intercepts, therefore, for cosine are at pi on 2 and 3 pi on 2. The fact that all of those numbers line up so neatly, not a coincidence, right? And lastly, when we have a look at our tan curve, we know that the period is halved, the period is no longer 2 pi, right? What would that make the period of the tan curve? Pi radians, right? So therefore, here is pi radians right in the middle, okay? You're going to go up to the asymptote. What is the asymptote now? It's not going to be 90 degrees, it's pi on 2. Why is it pi on 2? Because the tan curve is sine on cos, right? And look, cos is 0, so therefore, Dividing by zero doesn't exist. That's why you get this asymptote here. That tells you there's also an asymptote of three pi on two. And then here are your two parts in the middle. Okay. So you're going to begin getting used to thinking of these in radians. 
Um, I promise, once you get a little more used to it, they're actually much more comfortable to work with, but it takes some time to get there. 